Gonna have a look over the rear suspension now. Rear sway bar is very much like the front. This is a, but this is a three quarter inch sway bar, uh, but it's a straight through design again. And with no suspension hooked up, you can see how easy, you know, it's just one finger. You can see how easy it is to move. So you don't want resistance here. You want resistance in your shocks and your dampers. So a lot of people I'm sure know this, but this is an adjustable sway bar. If the bolt is in a hole that's farther away from the pivot point, then it has more leverage, which means the, bo the bar is going to twist more because it has more, le the suspension has more leverage on the bar. So the bar twists more, which means that the rear sway bar in this instance would be softer. And so if I was moved it to a, a hole that's closer, that has less leverage, it can't twist the bar as much. And now the rear sway bar is effectively a stiffer rear sway bar. So it's a nice way you can be at the track. You can zip this out change holes, zip them back in on both sides, and you can adjust really the, the balance between the front and the rear, uh, oversteer, understeer, um, and then the combination of the two affects your body roll. The rear suspension is effectively a three link rear suspension. So you've got one link here, one link here, and effectively you've got one link here. This setup in particular, though, is called a decoupled three link. You've got this link that's broken into two pieces, this upper and a lower. This is the accelerator link, and this is the decelerator link. So the way that it works, if you can imagine, the rear of the housing is going to bolt into these lower control arms, and then the top of the housing is going to bolt into that decoupled three link. When the car accelerates hard, it's going to, the tires are going to rotate this way, which is going to make the housing twist this way. When the housing twists this way, this bar, it comes through here into this canister and inside the canister is a spring. The bar goes through the spring and then there's a big washer and a bolt on the end. So when this thing, when the housing rotates backwards, this piston right here, slides out that way and it compresses this spring and so what that's doing is it's when you get on the gas hard and suddenly um, it's absorbing just a little bit of the shock and it's the same concept as drag race cars where they have the soft sidewalls so that the rim can rotate a little bit and wrinkle those sidewalls and and it just gives a little bit and it lets there be a little bit of spring in that before the tires need to it lets the gives the tires time to grip and catch the chassis up to speed. So because this is a road race car, we don't want soft sidewalls. We want really strong sidewalls so that our lateral control is, is, is real nice and predictable. But ideally, you'd, you'd like to absorb some of that shock. And what it does is it gives you a lot more traction under throttle. And then under braking, the opposite happens. So this is a gas charge shock and it's got settings for compression and rebound. When you brake really hard, the chassis is going this way. And when you brake really hard, the rear axle wants to, wants to push this way. So there's, this is a gas charge shock, so there's resistance there. And it's going to compress it's going to compress and take up this slat. There's some spacers and a rubber bumper. And um, that's really what you need. But the, it works the same for braking. So under, under hard braking, the rear uh, grips instead of, instead of wanting to brake loose on you. So it's kind of a trick setup that, and it's something cool that you wouldn't be able to do with independent rear suspension. So, Independent rear suspension, while it does give you good handling over like rough terrain, because this wheel going up and down doesn't really affect this wheel going up and down, save for the sway bar. But you can see this housing is bolted in there and it's bolted in here. And so there's no flex to this housing at all. It's rock solid. And so um, you can't really 
twist this suspension forwards or backwards. So if you run an IRS, it's really great for the street. It's good for rough roads, but ultimately on a, a, a relatively smooth race surface, decoupled three link is supposed to give you better handling and, and, and more predictable grip than the IRS is, which is pretty slick. So I've never run one of these before, so this will be a first time for me. So I'm learning, you're learning. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty cool to see it come to life. This is the Watts link, this section here. And the way that this works is that you have this bar here that's attached rigidly to the chassis and it's able to pivot. And then you've got a link here that would go to the left of the rear differential housing and then you've got a link here that would go to the right of the differential housing. What it does is it keeps the rear axle centered under the car, keeps it from swinging to the left or to the right. But it also allows, because of these end links, it also allows the suspension to go up and down, the, sus the rear axle to twist side to side. So you get, you get total movement of your rear axle in the direction that you want to. One of the cool things about this race car setup is that these watts links, you, you would adjust it to adjust roll center. And because it's race car, if this was out on the track and I needed to make an adjustment or change the ride height or something and I want to make an adjustment to the watts link quickly, I can stick a ratchet under there. Uh, it's just got a, a, a square for a 3 8 inch ratchet. or I could have a drill with an extension in the socket, open the trunk, stick it right down here onto this bolt, and then turn this to adjust the height of it. Bzz, up or down. Similarly, the accelerator link is mounted on a shaft, goes all the way through the bottom and through the top. And so you can put a ratchet in the trunk or under the car and you can raise or lower the accelerator link to give you more or less traction on launch. That pretty much covers the Galaxy chassis, at least what I've got built so far. Uh, I just had some dry sump stuff come in, do pan and everything. I have a mock-up block coming, I have a transmission coming, so lots of more stuff's going to get assembled. And uh, I'm excited to share it with you. Thanks for being here.